Okay, so as you can see here, we have the uh, ZCU111. This is a development board I've been talking about in my blog. See here actually the RF socket itself underneath the heatsink and the fan. Then zooming out a little bit, we have the high pin count FMC connector, the uh, quad SFP, uh, display port, USB 3, SATA underneath the shield, and the PL. DDR4 gigabytes of DDR4 is under there underneath that shield. We have some analog mix circuitry clocking information as well underneath that, that shielded area. And then looking out a little bit more, you can see that we have the Ballon board connected to the RFMCs there. And you can see that I've got looped cables connecting from one from one to the other, such that we can output two DACs into two ADCs. So uh, over down here we have the we have the Ethernet link down here the USB UART and we have the power obviously so let's turn it on you can hear the power firing up there and you can see it you can see it booting on my machine so the main application that we want to get up and running today is this one so the RF RF data converter which will take a few seconds so so all the communication is done between my PC and the um, RF sock board is done using Ethernet so it'll take a little while for it to come up once the Ethernet stack comes up and once all the communications up and running we'll see this spring to life and we'll see this start loading as you can see now start loading the configuration data from the RF, RF sock so this is quite useful because it means you can attach this to the RF sock if you've configured it one way or another and then here you can see the see the uh, RF the DAC converter subsystem the ADC converter subsystem a little bit of information pops up on the programmable logic as well which you can see down here you see the processing system and the overall package so just a nice little bit of information first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the um, going to set up the DACs so we're going to come here we're going to click on the DAC here we're going to double click on this we're going to set the PLL we're going to change the PLL just to show how flexible this is and we're going to change this to 6389.76 We're going to click OK and then we need to click apply the changes to apply those changes and you can see those going down there. Once we've got down here what we're going to do is we're going to set both the DAC0 and DAC1 to uh, their crossbars uh, to use uh, IQ into I and Q inputs and not not real data. Then again we've got to click on apply so you'll see this being you'll see this being downloaded now. Uh, then we want to actually configure them so we're going to set them for highly linearized. We're going to have eight times interpolation in the inter in the interpolator and we're going to have a frequency here of 1500 so this is our, this is our mixer frequency so we click and apply there you'll see this diagram down here uh, it comes to show so it shows we've got i and q there it shows we've got eight there 1500 there and compared to the top which with the second channel which we've not configured yet we can see that all in there so we will configure that second channel now we'll come through we'll do the same again eight highly linear and 1500 and we'll click apply again. So that sends those down there. What we want to do then is we want to generate two signals. So this signal, this one we're going to get to generate at 150 megahertz, the center frequency of 150 megahertz. It says they're, they're signal not generated. So we're going to click on this and they see the signals being generated. I'm going to come down to DAC1 and we're going to do also the same. We're going to generate this one. We're going to leave at 200 and we're going to click on generate there. Now we're going to quickly configure the ADC, so we're going to come down here and do the ADC, so we're going to configure the PLL, we're going to configure this for 3194.88, which is exactly half of what the uh, TX clock sampling is, and we're then going to configure the real ADC, so we're going to leave most of this on. What we want to do now is we want to subtract the frequency though, not add to it in the mixer, so we want to subtract 1200. And I'm going to do interpolation of four, de decimation of four, because the interpol interpolation was eight, but the clock, the clocking, the differences in clocking takes that out. Apply that and configure that. We're going to do the exact same for the other clock, so minus 1200 uh, and decimation of decimation of four. And then we're going to apply that also. And then we're going to click on our acquisition window, which opens up a spectrum analyzer type one. So we're going to click this button down here. We're going to click loop and acquire. And you can see that we have a frequency coming through here at 150, at 150 megahertz. You can see some skirt around the edge here because it's not quite, uh, it's not, uh, not quite coherently sampled. So if we apply a window, then here we'll see that that gets all addressed. So we apply the Hanning window, and we can see that's at 150 meg. 
If we go back to the ADC tile, we click on ADC tile 1, click on that's acquisition as well, we tell that we want to loop, and again we can see the we can see the same here, although this one's at a frequency of 100, and then we can do the Hanning window as well, and we can see that it's running at the, the frequency that we expect, so there you, there you go, it's running at 100, 100 meg.